What's up? It is Ryan J. Downey with NotFest.com, and I am with the man of many faces because he's the multiple man, Jamie Madrox of Twisted Magic Ninja Entertainment. Mr. Madrox, oh. how are you this lovely, lovely, whatever day it is we're talking? Tuesday. I'm, I'm, I'm doing very well, Ryan, sir. How are you? It is good to talk to you as always. I'm well. We were chatting before we started recording. We figured we might as well go ahead and start yeah. with that because, you know, you know how we are. Yeah, I was like, oh wait, this is the interview. I, you know, you know the those the Scorpios from the seventies, dude. You know how we roll. Man, man, that is a whole movie on its own. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. It's, it's so a very, it's a very dark NC uh, seventeen. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. It's a CD theater that plays it. <laughs> yeah, when everybody yeah. leaves with a smile. You know, I it's a, I mean, who doesn't love a Scorpio? Somebody who's a, who's a hopeless romantic who's also really into murder and the occult. It just, you know, nailed it. Facts checked, checked, <laughs> approved. Absolutely. Indeed. Uh, so I was just at Comic Con, which is what we were just talking about, and I was had the a pleasure last week of hanging with our mutual friend Spencer Charnas of Ice Nine Kills on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then all through Comic Con, which is a wonderful segue into the reason for this conversation today, which is to talk about Silver Scream Con. And before we dig into the event itself, which of course Twisted is a part of with Ice Nine Kills, I wanted to ask you about uh, that relationship between Twisted and Ice Nine Kills, which when you guys and Spencer, like how that, how you linked up, how you became friends, and how um, the song came about, and all of that. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Warp Tour, uh, I'm gonna say, was was the initial. Where, where we met and 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 kind of got a vibe and and was like introduced and like uh just like seen seen passion like I, I love I love how just all the ice nine guys but you know like they all have that they, they want it they go for it you could just tell you like we were talking about people who are on stage and just they the persona they want it like it's such a show it's an amazing like a give all situation and it just resonates and it clicks and I, I love like pretty much everything they do. And uh, when we had the opportunity to work with him on a song, um, a mutual producer, Mr. Johnny Andrews, was doing a song and uh, and was like, "Yo, let's let's do this." And we were we were just like, kind of like honored and kind of blew back at the same time that that he was like, "Yeah, I'm down to do it." Because like not a lot of people like to work with us. I don't know if it's because we're the cancer of the industry. Nevertheless, I, I have nothing but wheelbarrows of respect for that man and uh and and just for the fact of just you know being like hell yeah man i ride with them those, those guys are cool i love that i love people who are real i love people who are true and i love that about them so i ride with him and of so, course once you connected uh there are numerous things in common not just music but of course the love for pop culture and things of a horror nature specifically uh, do you remember any kind of the, the early conversations about that the kind of shared interests um, we talked about like, like we just, we started, we started like, you know, following each other and stuff like that. And, and it's like, I, I, I love how immersed into the, the horror genre he is. I mean, throughout the music is, is a given, but I mean, like just his love for his personal love for like the things that he enjoys, like the whole Scream franchise and just now knowing him. I, I find a little more, I guess, I guess is it when I say fandom, like, like I smile inside when I see him getting to do something that I believe is like, that's a dream of his. Like yeah. right now, he's like, yes. so like bucket list, check it. And I'm like, that's fresh to me. That's love. I'm like, that's when you get to live your dreams and you get to do what you want to do and you live a happy life, it, it, it resonates in your final product and it goes without saying. So again, so I think that's cool. And before I knew him, I was just like, you know, it's a cool vibe and I get it. You know what I mean? But it's like now knowing it's like, oh man, you know, like I seen he posted the other day, uh, a picture of him and um, Sydney Prescott. And I was just like, you know, I, I like hit it with the, with the, the, like the heart emojis. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I know, I know how hard it is just to, uh, to meet that, 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 yeah. that famous actress to begin with. And, and I just know how important to the franchise she is. And it's just cool. It was like, kind of like when I met Nancy from, mm -hmm. uh, from, um, Nightmare the Wagon Camp, yes, yes, yes. yes, and I an icon for those of us. We're like, yeah, Meryl Streep's cool. Give us some Heather Langen Camp, Elm Street one right. and three. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, and an absolute sweetheart too, by the way. But yeah, uh, just just cool again. Like uh, the the whole living your dreams part, and just being able to uh, to to be immersed in 
um, a community that has inspired you. Like when you're inspired by something and it reflects and, and, and like acknowledges you and brings you in and welcomes you with open arms, that's like, that's the figure eight, man. That's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The figure eight. I like that. I like that. And it, <laughs> and that energy does emanate in both directions, that shared exchange sure. of energy from audience and performer that happens there. So Astronomicon, I want to talk a little bit about the early beginnings of that, because, you know, certainly when Ice Nine Kills fans see, oh, the band Spencer, they're doing their own horror convention. Right. It's not as easy as just putting on a show which in and of itself isn't necessarily even easy. Uh, but there's a lot of moving parts, a lot that goes into it. You have so much experience with this, having worked with your team to figure out how to even do it. So what was what was that initial conversation like and that idea when you were like, yeah, we want to do our own convention. Now what? <laughs> like, what? How do you go from I wish we had a convention to you have one? Like... You, 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 you like have to have a, a, a George and a Mike, uh, George Lahakis and, and Mike Winninger, uh, uh, which, which are two dedicated people who are um, able to facilitate and bring to reality dreams. Because that's what, that's what the convention scene was for us, is it was a childhood dream of nostalgia that like, uh, I have many memories of like going with my grandfather and that kind of environment. And it seemed to us that aside from your San Diego's and your New York's and your and shout out uh, Wizard World. I remember you. I love you. But like you know, you 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 lost a lot of those along the way, which is why some the the mega became stronger. But but the need for conventions and and the celebration of of loved fandoms. You know, there's there's a convention for Power Rangers, man. There's a convention for everything. So it's like it's it it, it was only natural that we were able to. Uh, try to bring our love for fandom of what we do and this whole pop culture um, fandom that we all share into one place at one time and and obviously sprinkle twisted in it as well. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned how there's everything, there's a fandom and a convention for everything and, and the commonality, even when it's crazy different things, that same love and passion. I moderated a panel for Image Comics about uh, some of their horror books right now. Yeah. And one of the artists... Uh, on one of the books who was on the panel comes from the world of My Little Pony. And because her name was Trish, she's a total sweetheart, because Trish was on the panel, the bronies were representing in the panel. And they were like dressed okay. up and and they were they were there. And they were when I introduced her, it was like she had her like little, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> go hard it, for yeah, what you love. It just, exactly. It just reminds me, you know, because I don't I, I admittedly don't know much about the My Little Pony mythos, but to, but I understand that, you know, love. Yeah, I can appreciate them, them, them bringing their ingredients to the uh, to the to the potluck as well and, and making it, you know, just like, hey, and we represent with y'all, too, on this because you're using our people and that's love. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, that's exactly I, how I, it was, too. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. you know, that was exactly that was exactly the feeling. So. When it came time to get involved with the Silver Scream Con, obviously it's a no-brainer, uh, the friendship there and the theme and everything of the convention. Uh, but also, you know, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but also the, the Twisted Camp, you know, they're, I know Ice Nine is relying on your experience and expertise and having done this yourself. So what, if you could talk a little bit about that relationship and, you know, helping them um, get their convention off the ground. Well, uh, uh... Let's see, how can I, to not, to not kiss and tell, uh, I guess is a proper way to, to, to set it up. I, I think um, we asked Spencer to be a part of our convention, which he was, was very, very welcoming, was just like, this is awesome. And, uh, and, and I'm honored to say the absolute least that he would entrust something of this proportion to my guys, to, to, to people that I trust at my everything with. For him to trust them with anything just speaks volumes of, of his character and how much he has love for his brand and wants it done properly. And yes. I believe guys are the best guys in the game. I mean, I don't, I don't yes. need to talk them up because I know they're good and that's all that matters. But I appreciate that someone else recognized that as well. So respect. Yeah. And it speaks volumes that he was at Astronomicon as. Absolutely. Absolutely. He stood and, with and, us. And, and, and then said like, oh, whoever's doing this, that this is who I need if I want to do it. Right. Like, like he, he's, he's, he's a lot like, uh, 
he's he's like me and not that he's ocd <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, wait, he, have we never he, talked about this? Because so am I. No, 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 no. But, but, but like he's, he's, he's like me in the regard that he pays attention to details. And I think that he saw a certain love and care that we took or, or, or our, our, our team takes in the preparation, the building and the execution of the actual convention. And, and, and so everyone leaves with a smile. It is, it is the show must go on and, then, and it goes hard until the very last con leader leaves with their photographs and memories intact on the airplane back home to their happy lives and, and can't wait to come back again because it was an experience that's supposed to be in my world, truly out of this world. But, but now, you know, uh, something that will, will be like a scream in your mind forever, a, a, a true horror you will never forget. Oh, I like that. Goosebumps. That's right. The goosebumps. I love, it's like, I, I, love, I love the idea of, of people building their own brands and 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 strengthening other opportunities as we all grow as people and i love to be a part of that so thanks to them for for including us i love that so uh we will be there at silver screen con we will have the show oh. over there as well and mm -hmm. i'll be uh, i am honored to be invited to moderate the panel with twisted mm -hmm. and to chop it up in front of the audience there That's i, I want to ask you and not necessarily for Twisted specifically, but just in general, as a fan of all this stuff, when you attend a mm -hmm. convention and you go check out a panel and there's, you know, actors, musicians, whoever that you love their work and you want to see, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you hope to get out of those panels? What are the kind of the stories you like to hear or the things you want to learn or what's that um, experience all about for you? I think again, like I, I don't, I don't really go with any kind of expectations other than the ideal that. I hope to see uh, them, the, the person in, in, in the conversation, whoever we're talking about, I, I li I'd like to see them in some sort of a natural, natural environment. So yeah. it, it, if it were a person from Star Trek, I always see you, you know, beaming up and down and all in, you know, phaser charged and ready to go. But, but now I'm just seeing you, it's just like, oh, wow, that they, they're just like us. You know what I mean? In the conversation, yeah. it's like, I pay attention to that. As a fan, I look to that because it's like, I know when I love them as this, but it's it's refreshing and interesting to see this. And that that's what I look for and just stuff like that. And of course, you know, it's it's a treat to hear, you know, uh, inside information or or how something came to be or nonsensical things that you would be like, that's not true. Like, oh yeah, no, this, they said it, it's crazy. Like, wow. <laughs> like yeah. I just, I, I love I love stuff like that. I think that's, uh, that's that's part of the ultimate fandom that 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 rounds out, you know, knowing all the details to your to your favorite thing, knowing who Ben Tramer is. Enough said. <laughs> For sure. You know what I mean? It's For like sure. you either know yeah. or you don't. And if yeah. you know, then you share that fandom. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, we've got a couple of the Broken Lizard guys at Silver Scream Con, and I'm just I'm so fired up to just and, you know, I you know, you and I, we love movies. We can quote some stuff. We recognize references. Dude, when you're Absolutely. walking around with Spencer for like 30 minutes, that dude is like, he has like a photographic memory for this shit. Like he just starts reciting entire scenes from, you know, he'll he'll do like a monologue from like the Naked Gun 2. And you're just like, well, how do you have this conversational recall? It's scary. It, it truly is. It truly is. I have a few friends that are like that. So so I understand it. I, I just I just roll with it. And I'm like, and I hope that I know the responding line. So I right, right, right. It. If I don't, <laughs> yeah. I just idly stand there like and I wait for it to pass. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're in the crowd and this and they give you the mic and you're like, I don't know this verse. <laughs> I don't know. Right, right. Like I, what what is this? Or, or like, yeah, or like everybody's <laughs> referencing a show I don't watch, like Office or something. And I'm like, oh, I'm just the nerd at the party. I'll just go eat what cigarette butts in the corner yeah. until you're done. Yeah, yeah so. indeed. Well, uh, me and Monoxide will talk. We'll talk some off. You will, and 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 I, I sit idly by, and I'm like, damn, they're just going for it. And they, they look like they're having so much fun, and I have you no know, <laughs> clue what's happening. But 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 again, you know, it's it's all about what you love, man. Yeah, I got to talk to him about this the Super Fan Season Five episodes they just dropped because yeah, mm. it, uh, if you have the Peacock, they've been putting out episodes where they're basically like director's cuts where they add back in you know 10 15 oh. minutes of stuff per episode that they had oh, to cool. for their time and, and it's yeah it's like you're getting new stuff but it's also for, it's not like somebody trying to make new stuff now it's, right 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 you're getting to see the stuff that you weren't supposed to see or in theory yeah. that awesome yeah. that's that's really cool you definitely see a couple two three things that wouldn't would not pass muster these days too which is also fun <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right, probably right, right. would not get past the uh the censors or 
whoever's in yeah. charge of that. The powers that be. Powers that be, indeed. Powers that be. So you are always working, always hustling. There's always a million things going on at the Magic Ninja Compound in all sorts of directions, comic books, music, podcasts. It just, I mean, it's it's nonstop. When do you get a chance to kick back and just not do anything? Does that ever happen? <laughs> are you ever just like, I have nothing to do for the next hour. What am I, what's, what's going on? That's, that's more like it. It's like I allot certain time of the day to like kick back and do whatever it is I've been wanting to do, but whether catch up on trailers from Comic-Con that I'm now, you know, like whatever yeah. the case may be, but it's like, I, 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 I'm a kind of a, you know, get your homework done first kind of guy. So, so like maybe it's installed in me in school. Like I was horrible mm-hmm. in school. So now I guess in life, I'm trying to keep up the theory that was supposed to be installed yeah. in me in school, which is get your homework done and then you can go out and play or whatever. Yeah. But, but Eat yeah, the broccoli, well, then you can have your dessert exactly exactly you know like uh, the, the reward system or something but yeah you know like uh but but i i make time for stuff like that but it's just not enough time or or not enough time or i should say that that i don't want to say that i would like because there's not a lot of stuff that i really check for so i don't know but the stuff that i have been putting off and I, i'm excited to see there's there's a couple things there was that new uh the the halloween ends trailer i was i was kind of blown away by that there's some there's some mighty good speculation running around about it and, uh, and and I thought that was fun. And there's a couple other things that I've seen that were pretty good too as well. And and here I hear that uh, Avengers Secret Wars is on the horizon at a way, way down the road. But nevertheless, that's pretty rad because Secret Wars goes hard and that's pretty cool. Indeed. So yeah. Indeed. That was some it's, like seminal reading for me as a kid, some of the, the oh, early Dude. days. And I didn't Just, know this at, at the time, but did you know they created that series to sell toys? Like they they had a toy deal for the and they yeah. were like we need a story you need a story where you can just put all these characters Mattel Mattel man they 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 hit it big yes. with he and they each came with the mini comic book and they were like if we just do it with Marvel they already have the comic books and we don't have to put them in the toys they just buy Indeed. the toy it's genius yeah I mean it's like with a dream man with a dream and again people to facilitate and bring it to reality you hit some of the most memorable things in the world and exactly the secret Mattel are totally memorable I love them. <laughs> exactly. Great. I remember yeah. it was the first time I ever, I, I remember back then, I mean, of course we have everything now because people of our generation mm-hmm. grew up and started making stuff. But I remember at the yeah. time thinking like, I'll never have a Daredevil action figure. And they made a Daredevil first, the Secret Wars line that I was. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Was hard to oh, find. Oh, going, that, going into KB Toys looking for that Daredevil, you're going to. Oh my God. And they were always three ninety nine or like four for <laughs> six or some, some weird bargain bin five and you'd have to dig through them and get you know, like <laughs> Conqueror and all the cool stuff. Hop, got yeah, one. dude. Oh, that so was, good. Secret Wars was my first exposure to Kang the Conqueror. That, That's what actually, was so cool about it. It was such a, it's like, it was uh, what people who read the comics would call uh, usual characters, usual suspects, but like to new people, it was such an obscure grouping of like, who who's Baron Zemo? And yeah. you're like, oh, you know. Who's, who's the cool absorbing rap. man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, why did they, who, they have a toy? You know, so it's like, it was just cool. So like to have them introduced and then become a mainstay. And then here we are years later and they're like fixtures and movies. It's, an, it's yeah, amazing. It's absolutely. Movie. Yeah, it's, it, and to your point, you know, I was at Comic-Con and I had friends texting me, telling me about things that were being announced and shown at Comic Con that I wasn't aware. You know what I mean? It's like I'm right. You're like stop doing, texting doing me the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm literally like they just did Daredevil 18 episodes. Oh man! Oh. And then the yellow costume and the She Hulk trailer. Dude, I watched oh. that trailer like three times yesterday. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't see it while I was down there, yeah. and I watched it with the kids. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't even catch it till like the third time through. I was like, whoa, you know, pause it. I'm like, oh, yeah. the yellow, you can see I it. See, I seen him, but I didn't notice the yellow until I watched like a, a person do a breakdown on right. it. Right. Down. And I was like, well, damn, I was blind to all of that. I didn't see that. And it's yeah. kind of cool because it's like, is it supposed to be called like Daredevil Beginnings or something like that? So Born again, or, yeah. Or, there you are. So it's like, so it's kind of cool and traditional to throw him back into the yellow costume and maybe work his way to the red. That's cool. Maybe get some Frank Miller stories in there. Love yep. to see. Them. Yeah, that's man. My, that's my favorite superhero, and I lo- and that was my favorite superhero adaptation was the the Netflix show. So I'm so everybody pumped. has that. I'm surprised you didn't say the Ben Affleck one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like although, click hung up on. <laughs> although I love the character so much that I tried. You know, it's like yeah. the Star Wars yeah. prequels where you tried to make yourself like something. Mm. I tried. I'm just I tried. like I love Ben Affleck so much that uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to give it a try. I will say that the director's cut 
which uh, adds about 15, 20 minutes of story back into it, does improve the Ben Affleck Daredevil, yeah. although it doesn't quite save it. I feel like it, I feel like it was it was doomed from the get go when they had the, the the horns like just they were so weird how they were placed yeah. on. I just uh, yeah I just remember so, not, uh, I don't yeah. remember very well about it. And all and the, some of the wire work because everybody was real. We were still living in that Matrix, uh, Crouching Tiger. Yeah, so you've got yeah. you've got Electra and and Matt Murdock fighting in the playground, but it's like they're on wires it, and you got yeah, overworked and, underpaid people erasing it out line <laughs> exactly it's yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. the director's cut does restore coolio to the movie who has a whole subplot that was cut wow. from theatrical where wow. matt murdoch's uh, representing and, coolio who's been framed by the kingpin well now i know what deep hole rabbit dive <laughs> deep hole i'll be diving in tonight <laughs> yes oh my oh, god oh man don't hate me for it after um well, it, sir, it is always a pleasure, Mr. Madrox, the homie from Twisted. Uh, so excited about the Silver Screen Con. So excited that you guys will be there, that we'll get to hang and all that stuff, man. It's just, Absolutely. Like you said, uh, getting to do what we love, uh, being at these conventions, uh, being around our people, a bunch of outsiders <laughs> getting to be a, a crew, crewing, all the outsiders crewing up for these events bunch of no goods doing good stuff exactly <laughs> See, that's like a true soprano th yeah <laughs> this is this is why you're the wordsmith that's why you're Andy, the lyricist. Come on. what do you want i love it dude uh well thanks so much and uh if i don't see you before then talk to you before then i will see you there don't forget to check out our panel it's going to be the bomb and me and Manox are doing a batman and robin pro photo op uh Definitely not something you're going to want to miss. I haven't done it in a great while, bringing it back for this special event because we wanted to do a little something extra because oh. it's just so cool, man. And we want to be in the vibe. I want to do my cosplay. I want to be walking around and just, just get in the vibe. So if you're out there and you see us, stop by, say what's up. And uh, we love y'all. Thank you I'm so much. I might have to rock my Juggalo League of America shirt. For the yes! panel so I, we yes! can represent Blaze as Superman. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. That yeah, right on. So rad. So Hello. very rad. Awesome, brother. Well, I will chat to you soon. Thanks so much. No worries, man. Thanks, Ryan.